Swahili is arguably the world's oldest living language. You know, when we were dealing with a lot of that uh, sort of uh, ancient religious experience, psychedelic experience stuff, we wanted to kind of hark back to something that was living but ancient. And what is more living and ancient than music? You I grew up here, um, and then I had uh, um, moved away for about 11 years or so, uh, and I met them in Reno. I mean, I, you know, we, I grew up in a very blue-collar sort of Portland, and then we come back, and it's this uh, mecca of uh, artisan what have you, which is great. I'm I'm into it. So, and um, they loved it, and so it was really their decision, honestly. I think after a certain point of. Advancing as a band, we just wanted something more and more accessibility to larger culture. When we originally moved here, I think we had more of a, a community and camaraderie with uh, the experimental community. Um, there's a really strong, lovely scene of psychedelic and uh, more ambient or electronic artists here. And I think as we've begun to transform a bit, um, Portland has also seen this beautiful renaissance of electronic music as well, um, coming up with you know other hot cities in the nation like San Francisco or New York. So we kind of fit in this funny middle zone. So I don't know where that leaves us exactly. <laughs> it leaves us hard to book. Hard to book. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of the day, then, you know, like, we, we pull from all these different places, but there's like a, we try to have like kind of a consistent vibe, you know, I mean, like Van's voice, melodies, things like that, so that even though we are transcending all these different genres, there's kind of a cohesive, like, idea that kind of holds the whole thing together. You know, we're making pop music these days, but I, I personally always have like an interest in music that's like subversive. You know, part of the pop music unit is e easy to listen to, but still have like something going on in your ear over here that is like kind of tugging and pulling at that. I mean, I think that's a lot of what defines who we are. And Last one, Bardo, was that the last one? Mm -hmm. It kicked off of a passage I had read in a, a book about John Cage's life. Um, and he had been studying um, Zen Buddhism for a long time and, and kind of met this schism point in his life where he needed to decide to be a little more true to himself um, or kind of keep hiding this fact that he was a homosexual. Um, and that really struck me in the way that the author wrote this very beautiful passage about um, seeing this sort of like tear in your your mental fabric essentially and deciding whether or not to like pursue that tear as a portal to your your truer self so that was a big a big thing for me at the moment
it's important to, to have this as an experience where, where people are being led through something. Um, I think we are ever trying to curate this as an experience for people so that they're continuously pulled into this universe that is maybe a bit fantastic and, and rooted into what we do musically as well. Um, I think the projections are all about bringing people out of that room and into this, this experience as opposed to being very tuned into the fact that they have driven out on a Friday night to go to Mississippi, Mississippi Studios and they want to see a show. It's, it's supposed to be this enveloping um, zone for them to, to exist with us. Yeah, and I, I'll go out and dance if it feels right. It's not, you know, <laughs> it's not what happens at the end of every show, but um, I think it's important to, to connect with people who have come out and are contributing to your show in a way as well.